my brothers and sisters I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you to forgive you and myself and I advise you and remind you and myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be in private and in public with your family or with your friends online or outside as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh the young boy at the time fear Allah ya Mu'adh wherever you are and whenever you do a sin do a good deed after it the good deed will wipe away the sin you did before it and live with people and interact with them and treat them with goodness and with good character he summed up the quality and character and purpose of a Muslim enough to enter paradise and to be saved from the fire my brothers and sisters Allah reminds us in the Quran O you who believe fear Allah and be God conscious wherever you are and let every person and soul look towards what they have prepared for tomorrow tomorrow is after death and Allah called it tomorrow because it truly is very short and very quick and very soon tomorrow is very near Allah says that they who went against the Prophet وسلم, when talking about the day of judgment and they denied it and they thought that this is the only life and there's nothing after it Allah says they assume and see that it is very far away if it exists to them but we see it very close judgment day is close brothers and sisters Allah says also on the day when everyone be resurrected it'll be for the people as if they did not live on this earth except for an evening or it's morning ask a person who is 40 years old how quick did time pass ask a person who is in their 60s or 70s how quickly did their years pass and how many hopes and goals did they have and how much of it were they able to reach everyone goes into their real home the abode of the grave while still have not fulfilled their hopes and their dreams but for a believer we know that we are only temporarily in this world like a wayfarer kun fid dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiru sabil be in this life as if you are a stranger or a wayfarer passing by do not confuse stranger with weird a stranger is a person who looks at their environment and the location that they're at but sees themselves following something which the majority are not sees themselves that they don't belong there forever that they have another destination after there this world is like that and it is a mata'a mata'a is the Arabic word for when you use for luggage when you travel you don't take everything with you in the luggage Mata'a, temporary material that you use for your journey just enough for the trip. Or as Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi said, it is like a person in the desert passing by with his camel and he arrives at the shade of a tree. He sits under the shade of the tree, enough to cool down and drink his water and rest and then he moves on. The shade of the tree is this dunya that you and I are in. We are just wayfarers like that desert man passing by 
We sit in its shade for a bit, but we don't stay there. We move on to our destination. A believer lives their life with the hereafter in mind. And oh, what a bliss and a paradise that is. The paradise is in the heart. And insha'Allah, materialistically in the hereafter. However, brothers and sisters, this shows us the importance of time. Some of you I see very young are in your school holidays. Some of you have goals of going on trips. And Islam does not forbid you from enjoying life. Islam does not forbid you from being entertained in the things that you like. Going, doing your hobbies, your interests. In fact, Islam encourages families to be invested in each other's interests. The husband invested in his wife's interests and vice versa. And the parents being invested in their children's interests and improving that relationship. However, only in the halal, not in the haram. And not letting interests and hobbies overtake your obligations and your duties. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith which is Rawahu al-Bukhari, Ni'matan maghboonun fihima kathirun min al-nas as-sihhatu wal-faragh. There are two blessings which Allah has given us. The majority of people, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, most people take them for granted. They are health and free time. Health and free time. Let alone those who use them in what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our health before we get old. Our health before we get sick. Our free time before we have no time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of judgment, a person will not be allowed to move forward until he or she is asked about the following. About their youth and how they spent it. The youth is from when you reach puberty. I'll just use the common understanding or agreed upon between 35 or 40. You're considered a shab, a youth. And they will be asked about their life from the moment you will reach puberty because Allah does not hold children accountable until you died. What did you do with your life? How did you live your life? And he will be asked about his wealth. How did you get it? From which sources? Halal or haram? And what did you spend it on? Not only where you got it from, but how did you spend it? Because wealth is an amana. It's a trust. A Muslim doesn't say this is from myself like the way Qarun said. He said this is from me. Not from God, not from Allah. So Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِمَالِهِ الْأَرْضِ We made the earth swallow him and his wealth. What do you mean just from you? If it wasn't for Allah, we would have nothing. Therefore, it is an aman. And I read an article the other day, a business article which said, looking at wealth, it said that people who have millions affluent, rich, wealthy people. When they die, the wealth that they had, the millions, does not last beyond the second or third generation max. And then it vanishes as if it never existed. Allah, all your life working, for, it vanishes within a third generation. They said, except one type of family. They are the ones who their children have values instilled in them where they value their parents' wealth and they don't look at it as a gain. They look at it as a trust. This is coming from non-Muslim mouths. And Islam has already stated this way before that Allah has made us vicegerents entrusted with the wealth and resources and our body and our families and everything else in this life. And finally, you and I will be asked about our knowledge, our ilm, and our skills that we acquire through life by the will of Allah. What did we use it on? Rasulullah once a group of people from a particular 
town who were once affluent and very rich in resources and wealth. He saw them coming in after they had embraced Islam and they were destitute and poor. So he stood up وسلم, on the minbar as he is compassionate to all of mankind and to all creatures. He said, anyone who has a dinar or dirham and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them up to 70 folds by multiples by multiples more. He never pressured people into giving charity, but he always talked passively so that people can make their choice from their heart. Suddenly a Sahabi stood up and he brought a bag filled with dinars, gold coins and threw it in front of Prophet He could barely hold it within his sirwal. Rasulullah face lit up with happiness and suddenly the other companions were encouraged and each one started to bring after this companion by copying him. Then Rasulullah stood up and said, Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasana. Whoever starts a good deed in Islam, meaning after they become Muslim, and they are followed with this same sunnah. Sunnah means an act. And people follow them, and it becomes a trend or a habit. Then that person who initiated that good deed will have the reward of every single person after him or her who does that same good deed and builds on it to the end of time so long as it's still running. You, my brothers and sisters, the Muslim community, well, they call us a sleeping giant. We are more powerful than what we think. Because we have Allah with us in our heart and in our minds and everywhere we go and we know that Qadr will come to us and no one can prevent it except Allah and we rely on Allah because He is the most merciful, the wisest and the best. And we have skills and resources and we are called إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Believers are brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters and everybody else copies us with, the, with that word. As a matter of fact, the believers are brothers and sisters. Fix any tear or wrong between your brethren. We are an ummah named after the embracing of a mother. Um. So we are embraced by the mother which is Islam and Iman. We help each other and we work as a community. I have not seen, mashaAllah, in my trip a community so forward and advanced beyond where I came from in Australia, even a little bit more than the UK, mashaAllah, and Europe than what I've seen here, tabarakallah, in the US, the Muslims. And mashaAllah, the services that you have, whoever started them, hani an lahu, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the great rewards or her, they are blessed. This community that is built on whoever started and initiated this, is a, the greatest investment and it keeps going for that person in their grave and everybody else who encourages to it. Your ongoing charity, knowledge and righteous children will still serve you after you have left this world as you know. My brothers and sisters, therefore a believer enjoys life but lives it with a purpose monitors their actions and their resources, their wealth and their life and keeps going with patience and perseverance until they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And suddenly your wealth, your health, your youth, your family, everything that you have that Allah gave you turns into a blessing not only in this world but also in the hereafter. For Allah says, قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ قُلْ هِيَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا خَالِصَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Say, Allah says, say and ask, who is it that forbid for the believers of Allah and the servants of Allah that they cannot entertain and enjoy the blessings of this life which Allah had opened for all of them to enjoy? 
say it is for the believers completely and nothing will be taken away from them in the hereafter from enjoying it. It is the following which Allah forbid fahsha, indecent dirty acts and munkar and things that are abhorred and haram such as oppression such as wronging and hurting others and taking their rights. Other than that, a Muslim lives their life in happiness like everyone else, but with purpose and the hereafter is all yours, insha'Allah. So my brothers and sisters, utilize your time, utilize your hobbies and skills, utilize your free time, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, forgive our sins and shortcomings, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all strength and you. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, the parents, your children are your greatest asset and investment in your life and your hereafter. So look after them and care for them as an amana and a trust, not as a property or a belonging. And remember that your children look up to you when they are children and that our children may not obey us all the time, but they never fail to imitate us. So Ibadullah, servants of Allah, be good role models for them and monitor your words and actions all the time. May Allah bless you and may Allah give you that strength and guidance. My brothers and sisters, the greatest asset is our children after we leave this world. Rasulullah counted three things that are ongoing and they are a charity which we left behind, knowledge which we left behind that people still learn from that is beneficial and the righteous child which makes dua for us. In fact, in a hadith which has been authenticated by some of the Muhaddithin scholars that a person will see their level rise in the hereafter. And they say, Anna li hadha. Where did I get this extra level from when my deeds were enough or had finished? And the angels say to them, By the seeking of forgiveness, of your righteous child which you left behind. Share with them their hobbies, their feelings, and your vulnerabilities. And make your home a home of nurturing where your children can talk to you, especially about their growing needs when they become teenagers. Share with them this and let them know that you're not going to judge them, but you're going to help them. And don't turn your homes in only instructions and rules, although that is needed. Give it a time and space for happiness and for fun as well. And when the children see their mother and father on the same page, even if they conflict, they reconcile, then insha'Allah your children will grow up healthy in every way, insha'Allah. My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, my young brothers and sisters and my young children. May Allah make you leaders of the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you among those whom He chooses to be among His awliya, His most beloved and loyal. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to reward us for our deeds and not make them go in vain. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families and to protect us while we are living and while we are dead. I ask Allah to hide our faults and shortcomings and forgive us for what people don't know about us. I ask Allah to make us better than what they assume of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran the garden of our hearts and the guide of our life and the, and the guide in the hereafter and the savior from the fire and the entrance card into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the martyrs of our brothers and sisters in Gaza, Palestine and everywhere around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure their sick and lift the oppression off them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them of their atrocities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. May Allah have mercy upon their children and make them awaiting for them at the fountain of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the doors of Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the state of their injustice to justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and keep us steadfast. Forgive us and accept our salah.